Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is the Tuesday, October 17th meeting of the Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Donna Lascalia. I'm the Director of Public Works, also the Chair of this Commission. I want to announce the audio and video recording of this meeting. Uh, Beth, if you are ready, please call the roll. Donna? Yes. Yeah. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamila? Yeah. And uh, Carolyn and Adam are absent, I assume, since that was the plan? They are, thank you. Okay. You have a quorum. Okay, thank you, Beth. Eight people. Thank you. Next up is public comment. That's an opportunity for uh, anyone who wishes to address this commission to do so. I do ask that if you're here to speak on a topic that is on the agenda that you hold your comments until that time. Uh, it makes for a more orderly meeting, but if you're here to speak to us about something that is not on the agenda, uh, we welcome you to do so now. I just need your name and city and town of residence and ask that you limit your comments to two minutes for us. Um, the first hand I see is Barbara. So we will unmute you, Barbara. Go ahead. Hi, I am Barbara Bricker. I live on Meadow Street in Florence. I have been active for the last year and a half in interest in traffic safety in my neighborhood and in the city of Northampton. We sometimes feel as citizens that there's nothing we can do except be dependent upon the city and, and uh, that can be discouraging. However, I am a participant in the Northampton Pace Car Program. I can hold this up, but I don't think you see it, which is a wonderful program that each individual, I believe you have to have a private vehicle, can participate in. All you have to do is contact the, D the Department of Public Works, and you have to agree that when you are in the city of Northampton, you obey the speed limit. This has been a fascinating experience for me. And I'm going to tell you that it's quite astounding that most of the time, everybody's obeying the speed limit. And I kind of am finding out where are the trouble areas in my own personal. But if you have a car, and if you are driving the car within Northampton, I would love to see more of these yellow triangular pace car stickers on the back of more vehicles. I think it's a great program, and I think it's something where we can really, really make a difference as individuals. That's it. Thanks for those comments, Barbara. Anyone else for public comment? Okay, hearing and seeing none, we'll move to approval of minutes from the previous meeting, which was September 19th, 2023. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? Devin uh, makes a motion to approve the minutes. May I have a second? Second. Sounded like Diana seconded. Yes. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the minutes from September 19th? Okay, hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Donna? Yes. Yeah. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? I did have an edit that I had requested. Apparently it didn't get to you, Beth. That's right. You, I got your email saying you had edits, but there was nothing attached and I left you a message asking for clarification and hadn't heard back yet. So okay. uh, just tell me what you want to do. Um, there was a um, part on there that referred to um, the synagogue um, YMCA and the um, survival center, I believe it was referred to as businesses. 
instead of what I had requested, it would be organizations. Um, these are not commercial businesses and I don't feel that they should be um, um, designated as such. That's it. Um, does that it? So I'm um, Donna, would that be a considered a scrivener's area, do you think, or do I need to? It, I think it's a, a Scrivener's error. I, counselors, do you have any comments on that? And also procedurally, since we're in the middle of the role, um, I, I, I don't know that we can make alterations. We would sort of have to stop and and go backwards. So I don't. If either of the counselors want to weigh in on this, I'd appreciate it. I, I don't. We can make changes in the middle of the role. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think a Scrivener's error, I, I think this makes sense, it's, it's so minor, but to be on the safe side, we might want to just recall the role. Okay, so it, as, counselor, as amended. It, it, uh, okay, so we can, um, we will stop with the role and we're discussing that this is a Scrivener's error at this point and and we're going to um do i have to make a yes do i have to ask for a motion for a new um yes Devin makes a motion that we accept the minutes as amended do we have a second a second is that diana again uh that was me i think i diana was unmuting but um that was Karen. Oh, sorry okay because I'm writing, by the time I look up, I can't see anybody's lips move usually. So, okay, so we are altering the minutes to reflect that we are referring to um, uh, the establishments along uh, Prospect Street as uh, organizations and not businesses. Do I have that correct? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion on that? Okay. Thanks to the counselors for your assistance on that. Um, now, Beth, let's call the roll again. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamila? Okay. So the second, the amended version passes unanimously with eight votes, eight yeses. Sorry, Councillor Gore abstained. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Okay. Next up is uh, departmental updates. I have several from DPW. So pavement markings are ongoing citywide, uh, painting crosswalks across the city. The painting's done during the nighttime, and they will be hitting all the crosswalks throughout the city. Uh, before the snow flies, Damon Road, the contractor, Gagliaducci, is paving the intermediate course on driveways. Um, this project is going to stretch into 2024. The I-91 bridges over Route 5, the railroad, and Hockenham Road on I-91 southbound, daytime right lane closures are Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. for site access. On Route 5, daytime shoulder closures are Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. for concrete and slope work. And on Hockenham Road, there will be a daytime road closure on Wednesday from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. for rebar and concrete work. And there is a detour in place uh, as there has been um, throughout this project. Other Mass DOT projects, Project 610657, a 25% design public hearing was held last Wednesday, October 11th for the proposed installation of a shared use path along the west side of Mount Palm Road from the Manhattan Rail Trailhead in East Hampton to extend northerly to exit 18 I-91 northbound on and off ramp. Project number 608869 Old Springfield Road, a 25% design public hearing for the proposed bridge replacement on Old Springfield Road over the Mill River will be held tomorrow, October 18th at 7 p.m. A registration link to attend the virtual meeting is available on the city website. Any questions regarding these projects should be directed to Mass DOT District 2. We do have one final update, school zone flashing beacons. 
uh, have been installed for the high school and for Smith Vocational on the Route 9 corridor. Maybe uh, folks have seen those. Those are the result of a grant that we received from DOT um, and they have uh, speed feedback signs. Um, and uh, they've, it, interestingly, you know, I, I've sort of watched the traffic in that corridor since they've been in and um, I love speed feedback signs and I think they're very effective at uh, slowing motorists down. So those have been installed. Um, for those who have seen them. Does anyone else have any updates for the commission? Okay, seeing and hearing none. Next, we'll move to matters before the commission. First up is a proposed ordinance relative to parking on Ward Avenue. I'll read the ordinance. It's an ordinance relative to parking on Ward Avenue, an ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the city council of the city of Northampton and city council assembled as follows. Section one, the section 312-102 of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-102, schedule one, parking prohibited at all times. Location, Ward Avenue side south from a point 25 feet westerly from James Avenue to a point 50 feet westerly from James Avenue. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? I'll make that motion. I'll second that, Ms. Jody. Thank you. So this was, uh, war, parking on Ward Avenue was discussed at the May 2022 TPC meeting. That time, a 75-foot parking restriction was proposed on Ward Avenue by the path to the Mill River Trail. Uh, DPW has utility easements on that trail. We have a water line that's not in service, but we have sewer and stormwater lines that are very much in service. We actually had an incident um, on our drain line there and had difficulty accessing the area because cars, cars were parked in front of the gate. So that led us to draft an ordinance uh, restricting parking so that we could actually get equipment down there if, if there was um, a, an incident that we needed to respond to. Uh, fortunately, the incident was on our drain line and not on our sewer line because the car parked in front of the gate slowed us down at the time. Um, the neighborhood had quite a bit of uh, commentary on the proposed parking ordinance. So I've spent the last um, more than 12 months kind of working with the closest of butter to do a lot of different trials of various no parking signs, temporary no parking signs in different locations to kind of see how the cars were being pushed around. And I think we've come up with a, a very good solution that you can see in the map on the screen. Um, that's just a very small parking restriction um, that basically allows us to get through the gate if we need to get through the gate. It does not uh, disrupt the neighborhood in any way. Um, and in general, um, I, I think folks are used to not parking in front of that gate now as the area has been posted with temporary no parking signs for, for several months. So um, that is a explanation of of where this ordinance came from. I don't know if anybody has any uh, comments or questions for us on that from the commission. Maybe Councilor Foster, if you uh, have anything to add to that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Donna, for um, all of your work on this. Um, I, I know it was, it, it, it's been a process and um, just wanted to follow up after our, um, we had emailed just to check on neighborhood engagement and so I reached out to a list of people whose property um, abuts that trail um, and who had been involved in the previous discussions um, to let them know this was on the agenda and request that if they had any feedback, they either um, attend the meeting today or let me know. And I only heard back from two people, um, two different um, sets of homeowners, and they were totally in support and, um, you know, uh, recognized it. Uh, as a good move and just wanted me to pass that on that they were fully in support. So I haven't heard um, any concern um, about that. Thank you, Councillor. I appreciate that outreach. Yeah. Um, and, and like I mentioned, I've, I've had quite a bit of dialogue with the resident at number 10 Ward Avenue, who, who's been very receptive to this and very patient while we did a lot of trials on it. So thank you. Yeah, I'll, other... I'll just add to that, that I know uh, personally the people, the second house over, and they think it's totally reasonable. Um, and uh, all the neighbors they have spoken to have felt the same. So, yeah. Thank you, Jamie. 
Now I'll ask if there's any members of the public who are here who wish to speak on this proposed ordinance on Board Avenue, please raise your hand and we'll recognize you. Okay, I don't see anyone who wishes to address us on this. Any other comments or questions from members of the commission on the proposed ordinance? Okay, we have a motion for a positive recommendation. If there's no further discussion, uh, Beth, please call the roll. Donna? Yes. Yeah. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Camilla? Yes. Uh, that passes unanimously with eight votes. Thank you, Beth. Next up is a discussion of a traffic calming request for Locust Street. So this was submitted to us August 9th, 2022. Uh, I won't read the entire concern. It's on the screen in front of you, but um, this is one of many comments that we've gotten about the Route 9 corridor um, and I will also add that we've even heard in this commission, uh, you know, over many meetings, um, folks trying to enter and, and exit from uh, side streets on the Route 9 corridor uh, headed into Florence, um, parking difficulties, uh, and the like. So this has kind of been an ongoing conversation, but a timely inclusion of this uh uh, of this particular traffic calming request and the one after it for Berkshire Terrace, which we'll take up separately um, onto the agenda because um, we have engaged our engineering firm, Boston O'Neill, um, to uh, look at this corridor and make recommendations to us on improvements. Um, what I would like to do this afternoon is hear from people um, who use this corridor um, and who maybe live on some of the side streets and who share the challenges expressed in this traffic coming request. So that can inform our discussion with our consultant um, as we move forward with uh, understanding what we can do to alleviate these concerns. So um, first I'll ask if there's any uh, uh, commission members who may have comments or questions on this, and then I'll open it up to members of the public who may be here to talk to us about this. Okay, go ahead, Diana. Oh. Um, I live on the corner of Route 9 and Berkshire Terrace, and every comment that we have seen from the public in these requests and in previous meetings, I can only second wholeheartedly. Um, coming up, again, coming up that hill, people leave Florence and they think, when they're at the top of the hill that that's it, they're they're headed out to an open stretch of road. I have seen accidents and I think that Chief Casper has reported in previous meetings that this is a dangerous area here where there are a lot of rear end accidents that happen. I see them from my house all the time. Um, it's dangerous and my primary concern is for pedestrians. There's a lot of foot traffic. There's a lot of students walking to and from the middle school and going into Florence and it, is terrifying watching them try to get across the street there. Um, I always see people biking and it looks like the with the speeds that people are going down in front of Smith Folk, particularly the pedal people who, you know, are always trying to get up that hill and you've got cars just whizzing by so fast without, you know, it, it doesn't look like anyone's paying a lot of attention to safety when they get this open stretch of road that looks like it's it's almost an invitation to speed and to drive unsafely. So anything that we can do that we're able to do that is up to the city versus up to the state because it is a state route, um, I'm very interested in in supporting it and again, can just verify that this definitely does seem like a problem area. Yep, thank you for that. And this this section of roadway is is under, um city control, so the, this would be a, um, a city-directed um, initiative. Okay, is there uh, anyone from the public who wants to talk to us uh, about their experience on this section of roadway? Okay, Barry, your hand is up. We'll unmute you in a moment. So again, I just need your name and city of town or residence, if you could, please. 
Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Go ahead. Perfect. Yeah, this is uh, my name is Barry Zamer. I live on uh, on Route 9, Locust Street, um, diagonally across from the Silk Mill. So basically right on the corner of uh, Berkshire and Route 9. Uh, we've been here for about 18 years. Uh, I have a home office um, and I got to tell you, it's probably once a month I get just roused out of my my from my desk by a violent crash at that intersection. I mean, it's unbelievable. And it's it's an absolute miracle that a pedestrian hasn't been killed in that crosswalk. Because what happens is that people coming, particularly coming um, west, um, who are either turning left onto Berkshire or are, are um, yielding to a pedestrian, especially if someone's yielding to a pedestrian, you have people that think that they're turning left because maybe they don't, they, they might not have their, their signal on and they probably don't, but people try to go around them thinking that they're going left and they, and, and meanwhile, there's someone in the crosswalk. So it's a miracle that nobody's been killed, number one. Um, and the, and, and this is, again, this is in this, uh, in this document right here. Um, this is a this is a densely populated neighborhood. There are there, it's residential all the way to um, you know from Florence Center down to the crosswalk um, that goes from Straw Avenue and Berkshire Avenue. Um, and and by the way, there's Northampton area pediatrics is right down the street. I mean, this is these are families crossing this intersection to take their children to the pediatrician. And there are cars coming down that street. Now, we all know that if the, if, if the speed limit's 40, okay, and you're coming down a hill, they're not going 40 going down that hill. They're going 45, 50, 55 going through that intersection, especially at, at rush hour or trying to get home or whatever. Um, it's just a disaster. It makes no sense to have that be 40 miles an hour. Um, and if it is going to stay 40 miles an hour, then the only way to mitigate it is to put a, a traffic signal at the very least as uh, some sort of a yield signal there, or um, alternatively, some sort of a speed bump or hump or plateau or whatever they call it now to try to slow that down. Because, um, you know, as I said, I just, I can't count the number of times when I've been scared out of my wits and either had to call 911 or go run outside um, because there's an accident, uh, a, a car crash in that intersection. In fact, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, a car literally crashed into the silk mill, like into someone's window, because they were trying to avoid whatever the heck was going on in the intersection. So it's uh, it's really dangerous. It's 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 a miracle nobody's been killed, especially a child crossing the street. And as someone also mentioned, you know the 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 um, the bike path is right there. So people are using that intersection to either bike or walk to the bike path coming from the Berkshire side. Um, and well, I think I've said enough. Uh, that's it should be pretty clear at this point. Yeah, thanks for those comments, Barry. Yep. Next Excuse is me. Uh, Brett. Uh, I'm sorry, Beth, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to ask Barry, if you could repeat your last name and spell it for me. So Zamer, Z-A-M-E-R. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Brett, go ahead. You're up next. Uh, thank you, um, all assembled. Uh, I will try to be brief. It's it's clear that this problem, this, this intersection, this corridor is a problem in both directions to me. I am one of those aforementioned pedal people. I do bike this intersection frequently. I also drive it. And um, as Barbara alluded to earlier, we can all find our weak spots. This is one of the ones I've tried to pay attention to for years. I try to uh, slow down when I hit that, uh, approach that straw ab intersection and go to 25 and feel, feel see what that feels like, because that seems like a more appropriate speed. Um, there's also, I wanted to mention a bus stop which is across from the Silk Mill. So people who might be in Meadowbrook crossing to the bus stop, uh, which might be a, a pedestrian 
uh, you know, a, a hotline or whatever you call it. Um, that's, that's another factor to think about. This is also the intersection where the bike lane ends, the painted bike lane ends. And one thing that I think about is how wide Route 9 is there, especially as you go further down the hill toward the DPW um, and just the, the, the wide open spaces. Um, I'm wondering if, I don't know, just being brainstorming a, a, a protected bike lane or something to narrow the, the roadway might help with uh, perceived correct speeds. Thanks, I'll stop there. Okay. Thanks for those comments, Brad. Any other members of the public here? Councilor Jarrett, welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, I'll just second, so Alex Jarrett, uh, Florence, City Councilor for Ward 5. <clears throat> um, I'll just second the voices of my constituents who have spoken and um, certainly call for uh, a decrease in the speed limit, but uh, in order to make that effective physical design changes that will um, <clears throat> actually make people feel that, that the, the lower speed is the more appropriate speed. Um, <clears throat> And uh, yeah, the, but Brett uh, alluded to or spoke about the bus stop. It's a flag stop, um, but the R42 stops both picking up people um, going into town and then also drops them off coming out from Northampton at the silk mill. Um, so that, that uh, would be an important part to consider uh, as we're looking at, you know, at Perfus and O'Neill to look at as they're redesigning to make sure that 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 is still an accessible place for people to get on or off the bus. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments from any members of the public on this area? Okay, any other comments from any members of the commission um, on this particular section of Locust Street? Councillor Foster, go ahead. Just a question, is this included in the area that, that will be studied and looked at for, for potential changes? It, it is. So we're we're talking to Foss and O'Neill about looking at the entire corridor um, all the way from Cooley Dickinson up through Florence. And this would be a very similar look as, as what they're doing at, for uh, Smith College. So the traffic study underway for Smith College from their main entrance on Route 9, kind of wrapping around Route 66. So it's not um, necessarily like, a, you know, we're going to design this thing here and here's the bid documents to bid it. Um, it's more a feasibility study for what, what could we put, what could we put here? How could we restrip the roadway? You know, what improvements could we design into a, a future project? So that's kind of the, the concept of, of how we're approaching this, um, that it's a, a pretty lengthy look at a, at a very heavily traveled corridor. And, and so what I'm trying to do here tonight is to sort of take comments that we receive um, from folks who are impacted by traveling in this area, who might live in this area, um, so that we can give some direction to Foss and O'Neill on, on what they need to be focused on. Great, yeah, then I'll just, um, I just wanted to add in the echo about the sort of feeling of just how much roadway, and you you add the hill there. Um, I actually used to live at the corner of Fairfield and Locust Street um, a long time ago in bike commute. And as soon as you sort of get out of the the more densely populated area, it just, it, it almost felt like entering a highway. Um, and I, I, I think that there's just so much pavement there. It's easy for drivers to really, really speed up. Yeah, very, very wide there, agreed. Thank you. Any other comments from anyone on the commission or anyone in the public on this area? Donna, Devin here. Um, <clears throat> there's a two lane westbound from the light at Cooley Dickinson that sort of dissolves before you get to the DPW. Will that be included in the consideration for Foss and O'Neill? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna start at that traffic signal at okay. Cooley. That's what I wanted to make sure of. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, they'll look at that. Thanks, Devin. 
Any other comments? Okay, so we will uh, keep you posted on how we proceed with this. Um, but I, you know, a lot of requests um, for work in this area, obviously, and this has been a long time coming. So we appreciate everyone's engagement on this. Okay, next is a discussion of a traffic calming request on Berkshire Terrace. This was submitted to us October 5th, 2022. Um, and uh, the resident's concern is, is pretty straightforward and I think uh, echoed by a lot of folks, safety issue with turning cars at the intersection of Berkshire Terrace and Route 9. Um, so I one thing I will note is that in 2022, uh, we did paint in 100 feet of double yellow center lines on both Berkshire Terrace and Strar Avenue at the intersection with Route 9. And it, this was because we were seeing drivers kind of shortcutting those turns. So we were trying to kind of keep everybody in their lane, if you will. Um, but, it, you know, that was kind of an attempt to move traffic around with uh, line painting, which can be very effective um, at, at times. So. Um, does anyone from the commission have any comments on this? This uh, intersection will obviously um, be included in everything that we just talked about, but any specific uh, comments um, from uh, for this particular area? Anyone from the public? Any residents of Berkshire Terrace who have anything to add on this? Okay, so this will this will definitely be swallowed into the larger um, Route ninety uh, route, excuse me, Route nine um, study. Uh, hopefully, not a Route ninety study, um, Route nine study, and um, we'll be reporting back on on that progress as as we move forward. So, thanks. Okay, next is a discussion of a parking request for Hancock Street. So. Um, we have uh, quite a backlog of traffic calming requests and also a backlog of parking requests. So this was submitted to us April 9th, 2023. Um, the resident's concern is that Hancock Street is the only street in the neighborhood that does not allow overnight street parking. This is a challenge for renters where off-street parking is limited. And this person would like to see overnight parking to be made accessible. Ideally, this would be for anyone, but a compromise to be overnight street parking by permit only. Um, so I just have a couple of comments to inform the discussion. Uh, Hancock Street is 540 feet long and about 28 feet wide. So we do have to consider kind of the mathematics of, of the street width when we think about parking. Um, parking is prohibited between 12.01 a.m. and 6 a.m. on the south side. Um, and A will kind of... Uh, I guess, turn this over. Maybe if, if Nancy has any comments uh, to just talk about um, kind of what permit parking looks like in the city um, and, and that there can be fees associated with that. Um, so I, I just to kind of address that concern, maybe Nancy, if you could just say a few words about what permit parking looks like, it'd be helpful. Thank you. So as far as um, resident neighborhood parking. Um, there is only one street in Northampton that's currently designated under that, and that would be Kensington Avenue. That would need to be an ordinance amendment. Um, and the resident permits are $25 per year. It's limited to two permits only. And the individual would have to provide proof that they are in fact a resident of that street. Um, so that's the only one that would be neighborhood only parking. Okay. Thanks, Nancy, that's helpful. Um, now I'll ask if there's anyone here from the public um, who wishes to talk to us about Hancock Street. Okay, Councillor Nash, welcome. Hello. <laughs> Um, so I, I just have two things to say about this request. Uh, well, actually make it three things. I spoke with somebody probably about a month ago who uh, w raised a lot of questions about this particular uh, parking situation 
and at no point mentioned that they were concerned about overnight parking for uh, uh, any residents on the street. Um, and, and I'm not sure, I can't tell from uh, this form who, who was making the, the request. Um, I don't understand the history behind this. I think it dates back to, uh, I think I pulled it up on the city, you know, under the ordinances. And I think it went back to like 1986 or something like that. It was quite a while ago. Um, and that, so I don't know the reason for implementing this. And um, and I don't also understand um, how um, uh, removing this would, you know, make things uh, significantly better. Um, I, I just I just see questions all over the place. And um, I mean, if there are residents who are not able to use that street at night um, to park overnight, then yeah, we should explore it. Um, I just haven't heard that. And and that I know that uh, we've had troubles. It, it may date back to some, some sort of truck route earlier on uh, prior to establishing the truck route uh, up Phillips Place. And so, yeah, I, I, I just don't understand what's going on. <laughs> and sometimes that's okay. So that, that's what I, those are my thoughts. Okay, thanks, Councillor. I appreciate that uh, backstory. It, it's, it, it can sometimes be uh, hard for us when, you know, there's ordinances on the books and we're not sure how they got there and, and uh, someone questions them. Um, so we can certainly take a, a closer look at this understanding, you know, it's 28 feet wide. Um, you know, we, we do not have, you know, a ton of room to work with, but we have some room to work with. Um, any other members of the commission have any comments on this? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we'll take a closer look at this and we uh, may or may not be back with uh, a revision to uh, existing ordinances. Okay, next is a discussion of a parking request for Vernon Street. This was submitted to us on April 21st of 2023. The resident concern is that they feel it would be safer if parking were only allowed on the north side of the street. Um, so a couple of uh, engineering notes, Vernon Street is approximately 2,370 feet long and it is 26 feet wide. So um, not particularly wide. Um, there are several parking prohibitions on the street, um, but parking is allowed for both sides really on the vast majority of this street. So one of the things that we need to think about is if vehicles are parked on both sides, there may not be um, sufficient travel width for two vehicles to kind of be abreast of each other and a parked car with a 26 foot wide uh, roadway. So those are my engineering comments. Um, so I'll ask if there's anyone here uh, from Vernon Street um, who'd like to address the commission on this. Kathy, I see your hand up and we will unmute you. Hold on just a second. Hello, can you hear me? Go ahead, we can okay. hear you, go um, ahead. I, I own a rental property on Vernon Street, so I have to drive a snowplow down Vernon Street. And when there's a car parked on both the south and the north sides of the street, it's really difficult to get down there. Um, quite frankly, I'm surprised I haven't taken anybody's mirrors off. I can't imagine how difficult it would be to get a fire truck down that street with cars parked on both sides. I'd like to see it. Washington Avenue is a similar street with similar density. And I believe you can only park on one side of Washington. And I'd like to see the same thing happen on Vernon Street. It's just it's just too narrow to have cars parked on both sides. Thank you, Kathy. Can you please confirm your last name for, for the record? Yeah, uh, Maieski, M-A-I-E-W-S-K-I. That's my legal last name. Thank you. Yep. Any other comments for us on Vernon Street? Uh, Devin has one. 
Um, yeah, I, I do understand wanting the clearance for passing cars and for emergency vehicles, but uh, it would seem to me that it, it's a local residential street. And if you move all of the parking to one side of the street, I think you'll increase the speed going through the neighborhood because they won't be dodging. You know, you get a weaving effect sometimes with the parking and generally people don't park where a car can't get through. But it's just a comment that you may see a speed change if you only park on one side. Thanks, Devin. There's no question that parking can act as, as sort of a uh, traffic coming measure. Councillor Foster, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Devin uh, made the comment I was going to make as well. And given that there's um, local traffic for um, the school drop off and pick up I would be concerned if it were restricted to only one side of the street that we would see speeds increase. If from an engineering perspective, it's determined that there isn't room for parking on both sides, or if, you know, if, if it's seen to be an issue, um, then if any changes were going to be considered, I would recommend alternating which side of the street parking is um, similar to what we did um, on Stoddard Street, um, be, because I would be concerned about uh, speeds increasing significantly there with, with, with that type of change. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Jarrett, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, um, <clears throat> Ward Five uh, and Ward Two, Vernon Street is the line for some of some of this. Um, so, Vernon Street is a very long street, and so in, and the the parking request spoke mainly about um, Northampton High School and the rental property. Uh, that was spoken of is also on the corner there um, with Route 9. So I'm curious if this is just an issue between Route 9 and uh, Jewett Street, or if this is an issue that would be longer than that. Um, so I, I'd suggest that, that more information gathering would be appropriate to, to determine um, the areas where this is most a greatest concern. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. And I think it's it's true, and and we definitely hear this a lot in this commission. You know, many of our residential side streets do not have sufficient width for for two travel lanes uh, and cars parked on on both sides. Um, and and I think that's true of of most residential areas in in any city. Um, so that's just something we have to be mindful of before we implement parking restrictions. Um, I don't know, Kathy, if you have any uh, follow up comments for us on um, where this is most problematic in your experience. Um, it, I, I think it might be worth it to, to hear that if you could go ahead. Yeah, uh, specifically the first block from from Elm Street to Jewett Street when cars are parked on both sides and you're you're coming in from Elm Street, it's it's really tight there. Um, further down the street, it's it's still a problem, but there's less cars that park on both sides of the street. Uh, years ago, nobody parked on the, if you're coming on Elm Street, nobody parked on the left street. People only parked on the right street. And it seems like only in recent years that people are parking on the other side. Um, the first, the beginning of the street, there's a, a hydrant, so you can't park there, which is good. But there's usually a car parked right behind it. And, and it's it's tight. It's really tight. And I, I would, if one block had parking on the south street and the south side and the next block had parking on the north side, I think that would be reasonable to keep the traffic going slow. But specifically that first block from Elm Street is the worst, in my opinion. Okay, thank you for those clarifying remarks, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Councilor Foster, I saw your hand up, go ahead. Yeah, actually, I appreciate that, uh, Councilor Jarrett, your questioning and Kathy, your clarifying remarks. Um, I did have a chance to put this out. There's a, a not terribly active neighborhood listserv um, so I, I did put this out to get feedback. I, I had one concern from somebody who lives on the other side of Vernon, um, you know, who, who was concerned about making any changes to parking there, but um, I wasn't able to gather much feedback. Um, but that's helpful to know that, that the larger concern is between Jewett and Elm. Um, and this does reference, I think, when the, when the high school gets out. Um, so that, that sort of makes sense there. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments for us? Any other members of the commission or members of the public have any comments?
Okay. These uh these parking requests um will be reviewed uh, by internal city departments and um prior to making any parking changes, that's actually an ordinance change. So that would uh have to be publicized and uh publicly discussed um at at this commission um prior to moving to city council. So um we will review all of this information and in the comments here today and um we'll let you know how we're going to move forward. So thanks to everyone for the discussion on this. Okay, next up is updates from the commission chair and vice chair about previously submitted traffic calming requests. We have Bancroft Road. So we discussed this at a, a prior TPC meeting. And uh, after review, we have determined, or we have looked at uh, collision speed and roadway data. Um, and based on all of the data that we've collected, um, the police chief and I concur that uh, no traffic calming measures are uh, required at this time. Um, and, and just um, to kind of summarize, we looked at collisions, um, we looked at speed data, um, and we did take into account the conversation uh, about this um, at, at this commission. Um, and, and there is just not uh, data to support any uh, traffic calming uh, measures in this area. Um, any members of the commission have any comments on that? And I'll also ask if there's anyone here from the public who has any comments on Bancroft. Okay, seeing and hearing none, uh, we'll move to new business. Does anyone have any new business? Okay, seeing and hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved by Devin. Seconded by Nancy. Any discussion? Beth, please call the roll. Donna? Yeah. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamila? Yes. That would be unanimous with eight votes. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next month. Take care.